At the end of World War II, the German chemical manufacturer IG Farben was identified as the company that supplied the gas used in the Nazi concentration camps. The gas was called Zyklon B, and evidence later showed that Farben's executives knew how it was being used. In fact, evidence was uncovered to indicate that Farben engineers had actually designed the gas chambers. This led to some of them being tried at Nuremberg for crimes against humanity, including genocide and slavery. Interestingly, IG Farben was a financial partner with John D. Rockefeller and Standard Oil of New Jersey and a company called Standard IG Farben. In addition, within three months after Hitler came to power, the publicity director of Rockefeller Foundation and personal advisor to John D. Rockefeller, a man named Ivy Ledbetter Lee, was assigned the responsibility of directing public relations for I.G. Farben. After the war, I.G. Farben would change its name to become known as Hercht AG. Today, Hercht is a gigantic multinational corporation with subsidiaries all over the world, including the United States. Ironically, one of Hercht's subsidiaries, Roussal Uclough, is the French company that developed RU486. In other words, the same company that produced the gas used in the Nazi death camps also produced the abortion pill that is now being used in American abortion clinics. And in both cases, there was a known connection to the Rockefeller Foundation. On the week he was inaugurated, Bill Clinton received this letter from attorney Ron Weddington. Weddington is the ex-husband of Sarah Weddington, the lawyer who successfully argued for the legalization of abortion at Roe v. Wade case. 26 million food stamp recipients is more than the economy can stand. You can start immediately to eliminate the barely educated, unhealthy, and poor segment of our country. No, I'm not advocating some sort of mass extinction of these unfortunate people. Crime, drugs, and disease are already doing that. I am not proposing that you send federal agents armed with Depo Provera dart guns to the ghetto. You should use persuasion rather than coercion. Our survival depends upon our developing a population where everyone contributes. We don't need more cannon fodder. We don't need more parishioners. We don't need more cheap labor. We don't need more poor babies. Two days after being sworn in as president, Bill Clinton issued an executive order that allowed federally funded agencies to refer low-income women for abortions. He also directed that American dollars could be funneled to organizations that promote abortion in foreign countries. The Aid to Families with Dependent Children program is the worst boondoggle ever created. When a sullen black woman of 17 or 18 can decide to have a baby and get welfare and food stamps and become a burden to us all, it's time to stop. Dr. Edward Allred, abortionist, 1980. Edward Allred is the owner of one of the largest chains of abortion clinics in the United States. Not long before Allred made this statement, the Los Angeles Times had reported that his California facilities were handling referrals made by Planned Parenthood. Even as late as the 1960s, the wealthy elite who made up the eugenics movement never tried to hide the fact that their agenda was driven by financial considerations as much as it was driven by the desire to create racial purity. A good example of this was seen in 1967 when eugenicist and Nobel Prize winner Dr. William Shockley caused a national uproar when he stated that it was a waste of taxpayer money to create better schools and welfare programs for what he called ghetto Negroes. He claimed to have research showing that people of African descent are genetically inferior to whites in intelligence and simply not smart enough to take advantage of programs designed to help them. To save taxpayer money, he proposed that the U.S. government implement forced birth control to lower the reproduction of the inferior classes and then issue certificates to become pregnant that would be sold on the New York Stock Exchange. Shockley was a National Committee member of Planned Parenthood and a featured speaker at at least one Planned Parenthood conference. When Florida abortion clinic owner Joyce Tarno appeared on a local talk show, she gave the following reply when asked what America should do to help impoverished nations that are facing starvation or other natural disasters. Time is running out for us 
1968, Why, Dr. Paul Ehrlich wrote The Population Bomb. And in that book, he stated uh, a thesis that what we should be doing is helping those nations that have a reasonable chance of being able to produce their own food supplies. Those that cannot do that for whatever reason, those people have to just sink or swim on their own. And what we do is try to help those societies become self-sustaining that have a chance to learn how to fish in order to feed themselves. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you ad well, I, mean, I just want to make sure this is clear. Are you advocating, or was he advocating basically writing off Yes. People that uh, have no hope of ever because of yes. the climate or whatever problems of yes. feeding themselves. Yes. Sort of like survival of the fittest. Or right. And the thing you, is... Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. The more people you help to survive, the more people are going to be reproducing and having children beyond what we can reasonably hope to have so that we can educate and house and feed these people. When Joyce Tarno retired in 2004, she told a local newspaper that she had tried to get as many people sterilized as are in my way. She also restated her views on foreign aid, saying that the United States should help those countries that can prosper, but let the others wither on the vine. Citing Haiti as an example, Tarno said that the Haitian people should be made to stew in their own juices because they had destroyed their environment. In order to really understand the role money plays in the eugenics movement, it is important to keep in mind that its original mission was not to make a profit, but to eliminate a group of people that the elite saw as a financial burden because of things like welfare, crime, taxes, and so forth. And when you look at the wealthy individuals and corporations that fund the modern eugenics movement, you see that this is not really changed. You also see that these people are willing to pay out big money to those who can carry out their agenda. And when Planned Parenthood figured this out, they volunteered for the job. The result is that money has been poured into this organization to the point that Planned Parenthood is now a billion dollar multinational corporation that operates the largest chain of abortion clinics and birth control facilities in America. While much of Planned Parenthood's financial success has been because of donations from these wealthy individuals and large corporations, it has also raked in billions from you and me. In 2006 alone, despite having made over $60 million in profit, Planned Parenthood received about $350 million from the U.S. government. And in 2009, Planned Parenthood will receive approximately $1 million every single day from the American taxpayer. That's $1 million every 24 hours. That comes directly out of your paycheck and mine. Now, what you may find interesting is how your money is being spent. To give you just one example, we're going to show you part of a website that Planned Parenthood launched in 2008 called TakeCareDownThere.com. The clip is titled, I Didn't Spew. And I warn you, many of you are going to find it highly offensive. And you're going to find it especially inappropriate for children, despite the fact that is exactly who Planned Parenthood created it for. As you watch this piece, remember, you helped pay for it. Whoa, guy, where's the prophylactic? What do you mean? Look, oral sex is still sex, okay? If it's unprotected, you gotta reject it. What? What? But I didn't even spew. Guys, guys, doesn't matter. Look, if you're having sex or you're getting some blow jays or whatever, you need to use a condom. Because you could catch a sexually transmitted infection, even if you don't spew. Now, does this clip say anything about how Planned Parenthood sees African Americans? You'll have to judge that for yourself. But there's no doubt that if this same video had been made by a bunch of white supremacists or the Ku Klux Klan or some neo-Nazi group, we would all understand the symbolic message behind it. 